On January 1, 2021, the African Continental Free Trade Area went into effect. This is a significant accomplishment. After the World Trade Organization, the Free Trade Zone is now the world's single largest market for goods and services in terms of number of countries. It is also the most populous and has the largest geographical area. If the agreement's provisions are followed, the Free Trade Zone will spur significant growth on the African continent. According to the World Bank, trade between African countries could increase by 81% by 2035, boosting output by US$450 billion, US dollars, raising wages by 10%, especially for women, and lifting 30 million people out of extreme poverty. Based on research into the links between trade and economic growth, these expectations have generated excitement and political impetus to get the free trade zone up and running. Less well understood is the fact that the continent's cities are critical to the agreement's success. They are and will become significant production and consumption hubs. However, due to a lack of necessary infrastructure and services, most African cities are not yet ready to benefit from and support the free trade zone. This will necessitate significantly increased investments in the continent's cities. So, what do cities bring to the table? The significance of cities in unlocking the benefits of the free trade zone is based on three well-established benefits of economic density that cities can provide. For starters, firms, which are the primary means of producing goods for export, prefer to be located in cities. They are closer to a larger pool of labor and to one another there. This proximity allows them to specialize while still having access to inputs for their manufacturing processes from other companies. They can also learn from one another, which promotes innovation. Second, cities are the physical locations where the majority of trade occurs. Cities serve as the primary transportation hubs, with road interchanges, ports, and airports. Consider the port of Mombasa, which not only serves Kenya but also Burundi, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Somalia, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. It is also difficult to imagine a major city without an airport. Cities have their own internal markets. With an estimated 900 million people set to enter African cities over the next 30 years, rapid urbanization creates a large future consumer pool. This is the third benefit of density. Not only will the number of consumers make a difference in the African context. As evidence suggests, when people move to cities, their diets change as well. For example, there is a greater demand for goods with higher value added, such as refined grains and processed foods. This is an opportunity for African farmers to benefit as well, as this value addition will fetch a higher price. However, substantial infrastructure investments are required for cities to reap the benefits of the free trade zone. The lack of paved roads is especially noticeable. Currently, only an estimated 800,000 kilometers of the continent's roads are paved, out of a total of 2.8 million kilometers. This statistic is critical because road transport accounts for 80% to 90% of African trade. The cost of African trade rises as a result. For example, while it costs approximately US$2,000 to ship a container from China to the port of Beira in Mozambique, it costs more than double that amount, namely US$5,000, to transport it 500 km inland to Malawi. Cities are also hampered by a lack of infrastructure. In particular, according to the UN Economic Commission for Africa report, the cities that should drive the largest portion of trade and reap relatively larger benefits from the free trade agreement's provisions are small to medium-sized ones, especially those located close to borders. These are also the cities that have received the least amount of investment to date. They will not be able to attract firms, which are the drivers of production, value addition, and exports, if they lack basic infrastructure. Whatever happens with the implementation of the free trade zone, rapid urbanization will continue in Africa. The continent's population's consumption habits will change. If African firms are unable to meet these demands, imports from other parts of the world will. Other countries will benefit disproportionately from Africa's new urban consumer population in this scenario. 
The current political support for the free trade agreement is substantial, with all but one African country signing the agreement and 43 countries endorsing it. Taking advantage of the combined effect of trade and urbanization could have a positive impact on the African continent's economy. This will necessitate not only the adoption of policies, but also their implementation. Only Egypt, Ghana, and South Africa have adjusted their national regimes to implement the agreement's customs rules. In many countries, well-managed urbanization is still not a primary policy priority. As a result, populations are settling in cities faster than expected, and investments are being made. Major African cities, rather than benefiting from well-managed density, are characterized by the proliferation of slums and congestion. Furthermore, poor infrastructure deters large corporations. Each of these challenges necessitates a unique set of policy reforms, programs, and actions. However, in order to reap the combined benefits of trade and urbanization, it will be necessary to build on the political momentum created by the free trade agreement. This will ensure that national legislation is centered on the impact of the agreement on cities and their needs. Similarly, in urbanization planning, particularly in intermediary and border towns, investments should focus on maximizing comparative advantages in relation to the free trade agreement. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories.